Siding in the Trek and Trek Pro. If you're familiar with hybrid sights, these are really no different than sights in the past other than some added features. But if you're new to a hybrid sight, the instructions can leave you wanting a little bit more. So if you've got questions, the instructions weren't super clear to you, I'm hoping to answer all those questions in this little video today. So let's get started sighting these in. Like I mentioned, the Trek and Trek Pro, there are some differences, but they do sight in almost identically. The major difference between the two sights is on the Trek Pro, you have the engaged style micro adjust for your pin. So you can take three and a half turns off of each individual pin and micro adjust that pin. Where on the standard Trek, you're just going to have to use an Allen wrench and slide it up and down in the track to adjust your pin. So you don't have the feature of micro adjustability on the standard Trek. Other than that, these things sight in identically. So once you take the sight out of the box, you obviously are going to mount it to your bow with the 1024 screws that are provided. There's only two holes in the mount. You may have multiple holes on your riser to dictate where you want the height of your sight. That's going to be based off of your setup to where you can utilize the most adjustment in the site. So you'll, you'll have to decide that position for yourself. But initially, mount the mounting block. And then one thing I recommend doing right away is loosening the locking screw on your mounting block. That's a 532nd Allen, and it's got a ball detent in it. You can feel it pop in and out of each of these sight detents. You might as well go ahead and run your sight all the way in as close as you can to the riser. At least that's my opinion. That's going to give you the tightest sight tape while you're sighting this in. If you move it all the way in initially and your sight tapes don't line up perfectly, you can go out one detent at a time and then your sight tape might be exact. Your first axis is setting the path of the sight, the elevation bar, perfectly parallel to your string path. That's very important so you don't get lefts and rights at short yardages or lefts and rights at long yardages as you work your sight up and down the scale. If you don't get it perfectly parallel to your string path, it may hit right and left as you work up and down. So the two screws in the back here, if you loosen those, it gives you some side to side adjustment. That's how you adjust the first axis on this. Your second axis is actually right here on the front. There's two screws that you'll use a 764 Allen wrench and what that does is it sets your level to your elevation path. You want to make sure your aperture, your housing is perfectly level perpendicular to your elevation path. So that would be done by loosening the two screws right here on the front of the second axis. And again, you're going to need tools and levels to make this happen. If you don't have them, your pro shop doesn't have them, Lancaster Archery Supply is a good place to find those things if you want to utilize the features that you've paid for in your site. So once you get the second axis set, the third axis is going to have to be set at full draw with a Hamsky tool or something similar to that. You'll have to loosen the two 764 screws on the bottom, and what the third axis does is it actually sets the pitch of your housing forward and back. So once you get your first axis perfect, your second axis parallel to your path, your third axis is your in and out, so when you're shooting up and down hills, everything stays in perfect level, perfect plumb, perfect positioning. All of your axis adjustments are very important for folks that hunt out of tree stands, take steep shots for guys that hunt out west that may be taking really long up and downhill shots. If your axis adjustments are off, you will not hit behind your pin. So it's very important to take the time now to make sure that you have these settings correct. We sell it in a single pin, a three pin, and a five pin in the Trek and Trek Pro, but our number one skew is the three pin, so that's what I'm going to use for an example today. The first thing you're going to want to do is utilize the dead stop feature in this site. What that means, we've always talked about a home position in the past. The dead stop feature gives you a dead stop home position that you don't have to be looking at your site to utilize. You can just loosen the locking knob for the elevation, which is right there, and then use your knob, your elevation knob, on the side to roll the sight all the way up. There's a little pin that sticks out of the sight right there that hits a dead stop in that sight. And that's where you're going to want your home position to eventually be, 
but you have to run that elevation bar up to hit that dead stop for right now. Once you get that to that position, lock your locking lever back down and we're not going to touch that for a few minutes now. Get really close to your target. Since we've raised that sight way up on the Delrin to utilize the dead stop feature, we're now going to have to aim really low to get that to hit. So it's probably going to hit quite a bit low. To get that close to your position, there's four set screws on the Delrin right here that you're going to want to make sure you get broke loose. And we're going to adjust the whole housing on this Delrin stop. And at this point, it's a lot of guesswork. That's why I say start close to the target. And as in, in typical fashion, shooting a bow or sighting in a sight, you always want to chase your arrow. So when I move my sight way high, it's going to force me to aim really low. So I'm going to go ahead. I loosen those four set screws, and I'm going to go ahead and slide my housing down on the Delrin to get closer to a position where I think I'm going to hit. Now, you don't have to snug all four of them back down now. I would just snug down one so it doesn't slip on you while you're shooting. Go ahead and take a few shots at five yards, six yards, whatever. You're going to use your top pin. That's what you want your closest yardage to be. On a three pin sight, I would say most people would want it to be a 20, 30, 40. So that's what we're going to reference this sighting in method as is 20, 30, 40. So my top pin, I want to be my 20 yard pin. So we're going to start dialing this thing in using the gang adjustment on the Delrin, those four set screws, and I'm going to manually move this whole housing. So make sure you're getting close to hitting behind your pin and work your way back to 20 yards. When you get to 20 and you're safely on the target, spend all the time needed to dial in a 20 yard pin. Get it as close as you can by moving this whole housing up and down on the Delrin. If you get really close and you're like, man, I think I've really got it close and you're happy with your pin positions in your housing here, let's just say we've got it really close now at 20 yards. I'm going to go ahead and lock down my four set screws on my Delrin here to lock my sight housing back down. Okay, my sight's locked back into position. Now if I want to spend some extra time at 20 and make sure I've got my 20 yard pin perfect, I'll probably just use my micro adjust here to dial and make sure I've got 20 absolutely perfect. Once I'm happy with 20, lock it down, leave it. We're going to now work our way back to 30 yards and we're going to drop down to our second pin. Again, if you're shooting a fairly small target, shoot a few arrows at 22, 25, 27 yards. Make sure you stay on target until you get to 30. Now that I'm at 30 yards, I want to loosen my second pin, which is the red pin, and I want to loosen this thing three and a half turns a minimum of three and a half turns. I go to the dial on top here. That's the engage style micro adjust. I've loosened my 30 yard pin. I'm micro adjusting just the 30 yard pin right now. So I'm going to spend as much time as needed. We want to make sure the 30 yard pin is as perfect as we can get it. Don't just shoot one arrow in the dot and say, oh, I got it. Make sure you spend some time there and you consistently are hitting a really nice group at 30 yards. Once you've got that dialed in, go ahead back and lock down your 30 yard pin. Now, 20's done, 30's done. I'm in my dead stop position. I have to make a mark because now we have to figure out what sight tape my particular bow setup needs. I want to make a little pencil mark right here by my top indicator pin. If you need some more room or you're going to get confused on which indicator you're using, you can loosen this set screw and slide it down a little bit. It will cover up your Delrin screw that we accessed earlier, but we've made the adjustments. We've got our dead stop position where it needs to be. It won't hurt to cover that up now. So if you want to move that second indicator out of your way some, you can. Totally up to you there. Now what we want to do, we want to work our way back to 60 using our 30 yard pin. We're in our dead stop position. We've got 20 and 30 sighted in. We're going to use our 30 yard pin now to find a 60 yard mark. So what I want to do, loosen my elevation knob. I want to start working my sight down the scale a little bit and work your way back gradually. Go to 35 yards, make sure you're on target. Go to 40 yards, shoot a couple arrows, make sure you're on target. Work your way all the, back, all the way back to 60. And I know if you're a fairly new bow hunter, if you're a novice shooter, 60 yards is a long way. It really is. So 
make sure you take your time, make sure you spend as much time as needed to get a good 60 yard mark. And I'm only saying that because our instructions say 30 and 60. The red gauge to find your tape is 30 and 60. So we're using 30 and 60 so you can follow along with your instructions and use the gauge provided. So 60 yards, take your time, dial in, dial in, dial in. We're gonna say, okay, I've got my 60 yard as perfect as I can make it. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make another mark right where I think my 60 yard mark should be. Now, I think this is where people get confused. Once I've got that second mark, I can go ahead while I'm at 60, roll my sight back up to my dead stop position, lock it down. Since we're doing a 20, 30, 40, let's walk back up to 40 yards and sight in our 40 yard pin. We'll just get that knocked out right now and we'll be done. So again, loosen your third pin down, spend as much time as needed at 40 yards using your micro adjust dial on top. Now you've got your 20, 30, 40 yard pin set in the dead stop position. That part's done. And I'll go ahead and mention now, this is this particular setup. It may not be like everybody else's setup. Just because these sight tapes go to 130 yards, with your anchor, your peep height, your draw length, your arrow weight, the performance of your bow, there's a ton of factors that are gonna dictate the end result you can get with this sight. So just because we give you dual indicators and we give you sight tapes that go out to 130 yards, there's a lot of factors that may not allow you to get to 130. Fletching clearance, you know, where your starting position is. Like I said, the peep height, the way you anchor, whether you're shooting a wrist strap versus a handheld. Ton of factors that are gonna dictate the end result. You may only get to 90 yards as your longest sight setting because of fletching clearance. You may only get to 85 yards. It's all based off of each individual person, their setup, their build, the performance of their bow. So there's a lot of factors that may tie in to what your end result might be on this site. So that being said, now we can take our tape off. We've got our two marks. We're going to use a 764 Allen wrench. We're going to remove the two screws that hold on the blank tape. And we're going to go in and we're going to find what tape we need here. You can see our red gauge has a series of letters on this side, A, C, E, G, etc. On this side, B, D, F, etc. You want to line your 30 yard mark up with the 30 yard mark you created on your scale. So if I line my 30 up perfectly and then look and see where my second mark hits perfectly, it's saying right there that that's a G. Now flip this over, check both sides to make sure you're close, but it could be closer. Make sure you're getting the, the letter that corresponds with your two marks the best you can. So I'm gonna go back with my first statement and say that the G scale is the scale that works best with my particular site setup right now. And I'm gonna install that on my site. There's two sets of holes that you can install this in. Either one will work. If you're getting close to the end of the range on the indicators, you might need to move it up. Or if you need to get a little bit more range in the bottom, you might want to put it in the bottom set of holes. But either one will work in this position, it looks like. So we're going to run it in the bottom set of holes so I don't have to move my indicators as far. And this next step is the one that I think people get the most confused on. And I'm going to try to clarify everything on the dual indicators the best I can here once we get this installed. So based off my particular setup, my marks, my sighting in process, the G sight scale match my setup the absolute best. Again, I don't want to move anything right now. I'm in my dead stop position. I've got my 20, 30, and 40 and fixed pins done. I have the correct sight gauge or the sight tape installed on my bow. Now I just need to move my indicators only. I don't want to move anything on my sight other than the indicators. And since I have dual indicators, 
I'm going to utilize my top indicator to line up with my 20 yard pin so I have a 20 yard mover and I'm going to use the bottom indicator to line up with my 40 yard pin so I have a 40 yard mover as well. I have dual indicators. My dead stop position is always going to get me back to home. My indicator should always line up with 20 and 40 but if I want to shoot something at 27 yards I'm going to loosen my sight and roll my top pin down to 27. If I want to shoot something at 53 instead of having to move my 20 from 20 all the way down to 53 I'm just going to move my bottom indicator to 53 and use my bottom bottom pin is that mover. So you have two movable sight pins. So my top indicator, I want to slide up to my 20 yard mark. There is a little bit of play in these so you may not get it snug down in the right position the very first time. So hold in place the best you can, snug it up, double check your work. That looks really good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that down and say my 20 yard indicator is set. Now again, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to loosen my bottom indicator and I'm going to make it my 40 yard slider pin, which was almost lined up perfectly by chance. Snug that back down. That's really, really close right there. So now, I would consider that completely sighted in. I have 20, 30, 40 fixed pins ready to go. If I want to shoot something at 27 yards, I can loosen this knob. I can roll my top indicator down to 27 yards, lock it back down. My top pin is now a 27 yard pin. If I want to shoot something at 65 yards, I roll my bottom pin down to 65 yards lock it down. Now my bottom pin is a 65 yard pin. That's the benefit of finding the exact tape, taking the time to make sure your marks are correct. I have fixed pins always in my home position, dead stop, 20, 30, 40, always ready to go. If I have time to range my target and take the time to set my sight, I've got dual indicators that'll really make shooting longer distances convenient and easy. If you've got the single pin Trek or Trek Pro, these are by far, in my opinion, the easiest to sight in because you don't have multiple pins or multiple indicators. With your set screws or your mounting screws in your package, there's actually an additional indicator if you want to remove the two indicators and just go to one yardage scale indicator, you can put that on there for a single pin that's easy to do. But on the single pin, if you want to utilize your red gauge that comes with everything, go through and do the 30 and 60 like we showed you before. If you want to do two different marks, if you want to do a 20 and a 50 or a 20 and a 70 or a 30 and a 70, 30 and 80, totally up to you. You just won't be able to utilize this gauge to find your scale. You'll have your two marks from whatever distance you choose, a 20 and a 30, or let's just say it's a 20 and an 80. So now you'll have to go through and manually put your scales up there to find out which scale is going to match your setup best. If you have a five pin sight, you're going to want to mirror image everything we said all the way up to the point of going up and sighting in your 40 yard pin. When you get your 30 mark, use your 30 yard pin and find your 60 mark. And then I said, when you walk back up, sight in your 40 yard pin, go ahead and do that on the five pin. Walk up and sight in your 40, work your way back and sight in your 50, work your way back and sight in your 60. So all five of your pins were manually set at the correct distances. Or if you want to do a little cheat and you know what scale you're using, which was our G scale, you can actually hold the G scale up next to your pins and kind of get a really good idea of the position they need to be in. And then you can go to each distance and fine tune those distances. But that way on your five pin sites, you have to get that 50 and 60 sighted in as well to go along with your 20, 30, 40. Five pins a little bit more work, three pins the most popular, single pins by far the easiest. Study your instructions on the dead stop. Follow what I told you in this video on the dead stop as well. Make sure you spend as much time as needed at 20. You can make some mistakes at 20 yards. 
and you can make some mediocre shots and they still hit pretty good. That's why we utilize 30 and 60 on this scale. When you get back to a farther distance and you make a mediocre shot, it shows up on the target. So if we use 20 as a base number, it may get a little bit sloppy. You may not get the correct tape. So take as much time as needed at all your distances. Make sure you've got your pins exactly where you want them. Take the time, choose the correct tape. It'll make your life a lot easier once you hit the 3D range or hit the field. For the Trek, the Trek Pro, or any additional information you might need on custom bow equipment products, head over to custombowequipment.com and check out the complete lineup.